Hey guys, and welcome back. I know it's been a long time since I posted a YouTube video, and truth be told, it's been crazy on my end. We've had a whole bunch of stuff going on at the observatories between open houses, things that we've been working on with construction, getting the big scope going, and uh, some telescopes that have been donated to us. Um, and I've just been so busy with that and with work outside of that, that I just haven't been able to put any YouTube videos together. But in today's video, uh, I'm going to be talking about a lot of the changes that we've been making. And uh, I wanted to show you guys my rig here. If you notice down here, it got rained on, or what appears to be rain, but actually, if you look at it from down here on the mirror and the side of the telescope, you can see water droplets. It actually, my sprinklers came on, or maybe they were from the, uh, the golf course over here. Uh, these sprinklers got my scope wet and which is really unfortunate um and luckily they only got my scope wet because we have some other telescopes here um and it just barely missed this telescope right here which is a takahashi toa 150. Uh, if you know a thing or two about astronomy uh, takahashi is the best of the best when it comes to refractors these guys in astrophysics uh, make the best uh, refractors that you can get and this is um, as far as they go the toa 150 is pretty much the cream of the crop you can't really beat this thing it's uh, a superb piece of equipment luckily it didn't get wet from the sprinklers i just got a quick quick dash of water but that's enough to make me mad and say okay i gotta get this stuff covered up and get into a better uh, more protected location and uh, i don't have a place to move my equipment right now because this is the only location I can shoot from here in my backyard. So what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my remote portable observatory here in my own backyard. I haven't featured this yet on the channel. I purchased thing, uh, this thing about six months ago and uh, I've been really eager to use it. Uh, it's made by a member on cloudy nights. Uh, I'm going to have all of his information down below. This thing is called the Skybox. And I bought the six foot by 10 foot version that he makes. He custom makes some of the components and then uh, he ships those to you. And then you also cut out some conduit yourself to uh, make this whole thing work. And it's very affordable in comparison to most uh, observatory setups that you would uh, purchase. You know, most of them you're looking at a little bit over a thousand bucks to five, 10 grand, depending on what uh, you would like to be included in your system. And this system here is, is very bare bones. It's really just tarps and conduit and bungee cords. So this will, um, for a lower price, I think I only spent about six or $700 on it, is going to be an awesome kit and it's going to protect me from wind, local light pollution, you know, from my kitchen over here, or uh, from the sprinklers going off. So I'm gonna get that set up for both of these telescopes here today. So that'll be fun. And uh, before I get started on that, though, I also wanted to show you guys, we have a Mead LX50 here. This guy's been sitting in our uh, shop for a really long time. I've been holding on to it. Uh, we have it here on a Los Mandy G11, which is a fantastic mount. It's absolutely superb. Um, we've been really excited to get this telescope going. Um, we just bought a reducer corrector for it, which is the Starazona LF corrector. I can't wait to try that thing out. It just looks fantastic. But uh, so this telescope, this is something we're working on right now. Uh, we're just going to get this kitted out. And this is going to be specifically for science, which I'm really looking forward to doing, doing variable star surveys, doing um, deep sky surveys, hopefully doing some exoplanet transits um, and some maybe cataclysmic variable stars, something like that. I don't know. We're very excited, though, to start using this telescope right here for science. So first things first, we're gonna have to get everything out of the way. I'm gonna get all the cables off of the telescopes and I'm gonna get the meat out. And we're gonna get the Takahashi off of its mount. And finally, I'm gonna get my Edge HD out of there. And then we're gonna move the mounts. And now we're gonna have room to set up the portable observatory. All right, so within these boxes and this bag over here, I have all of the things that I need for my portable observatory. In here are all the joints to hold everything together. Here are all the cross members that form the whole framing of everything. 
And then inside this box, I have all my bungees, my tarps, all of that to create the membrane around it to keep it away from the wind, the light, and the rain. So now we're gonna go assemble this whole thing. I've built this thing a few times before, but I've never used it in the field, and I'm finally excited to get it really going. I wasn't expecting to use it at home, but after I got my stuff rained on, I'm not gonna go through cleaning my equipment again and again. It's really annoying. So I would rather just put it in something like this. And that's exactly why I bought this to protect my equipment. So normally it's only built for one telescope, but I'm gonna assemble it today and hopefully set it up in a way that I can use it for two telescopes. It doesn't change the way I build much of it. I'm just going to take out one of the cross members that goes across the top and uh, I'm gonna try to figure out how exactly I'm going to position some of the arches that go across the top. Uh, I might not end up using the, uh, the the roof of the observatory. It might just be using the sides. Anyways, we'll get that going right here. So step one in getting this thing out, I have to get all the poles sorted into the right locations. Then I'm gonna get the joints out. Make sure I run my power cables underneath so I don't have to worry about those getting tripped up anywhere. Then I'm gonna get all the bottom joints assembled, get the legs up, and then I'm gonna do the top. And then I'm gonna go around and get all of the joints fastened up, getting them thumb tight. Then I've gotta put up the tarp. I'm just gonna start with the upper corners and I'm gonna do a few around the top and the bottom just to get it up. And then I'm gonna go around at the very end and I'm gonna do every single one all the way across so I have it fully tightened out. Now that I've assembled the framing and the outer walls for it, I'm going to scooch back the tarp and I'm going to load the tripods and the telescopes in and we'll be good to go. Sadly, I did not get footage of me assembling the telescopes onto the tripods, but it just goes like any other telescope assembly would. So now it's pretty late, but I wanted to go over all of the equipment that I've got in here. I've got all of the pegs done all over the place, so it's all bungeed up really nicely. I've got the TOA here. I've got my scope. I just finished polar aligning on my telescope back here. The toe is nice and aligned, so I don't have to worry about that, but this guy needed some alignment. So I got that down to one arc second of alignment, so we're good to go there. And I also installed, there's a router on the floor in here that I have connecting, so both of these guys have Wi-Fi that's nice and strong, and if I wanted to wire them up, it'd be pre uh, pretty easy for me to do it. But that's how things are looking now. I should also mention... Both telescopes have full clearance in all directions, both from the walls as well as from each other. I've made sure that no matter what configuration the telescopes are in, they will not hit each other. So we should be all good to go. I installed a wise cam inside it as well to get a good view of the night sky as well as be able to watch my telescopes. This wasn't my preferred option, but it's good and it was cost effective. You can see though that I had rain and so when I want to cover up my telescope and get that all covered, I can quickly assemble the tarp on top using the cross members that reach across and then put the bungees around it. My cats were having a lot of fun as I was doing this. And so I just quickly went around in the morning, tightened everything up, and then attached the bungees all the way around. If I was out in the field and it was blowing with a lot of wind, I would cover this up with all of the bungees and I would have every single hole tarped down. And here's another shot with the all sky camera on a clear night. After using this thing for about two weeks now, I'm extremely satisfied with it. It's been wonderful being able to have a wise cam in there to be able to look at my equipment. And I've since put the SCT in there instead of the TOA 150 as that is now back at the observatory. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you guys are interested in purchasing one of these sky boxes, I have his cloudy nights information linked down below so you guys can shoot him a message on there. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like, please leave a comment. And if you guys aren't subscribed already, please do. Thank you guys so much for watching my video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.